Well, ladies and gentlemen, surprise, surprise, it's Dino Day at Diesel Pump UK. Dino Day. Dino Day. So, what we're dinoing today is a Discovery 2, which used to be um, Gaz, Gary at Gazfab's car, and it's quite nice. Um, he sold it on to another chap, and basically the other chap's a bit hungry for more power, so we're going to give him a, a, a nice power upgrade. Um, and we'll see a bit of a before and after of what it's capable of. Um, and we'll see what kind of losses, because we're expecting a fair amount, because we've got big tyres, auto transmission, and other bits and pieces. Should have a quick shop update and see what's going on in the meantime. Oof, a beautiful 124 build going on. Look at that. Look at that billetness. That is nice, nice, nice. Excited about this one. We're going to be doing a, uh, a nice full uh, build video on that at some point. And we've got Luke over there. He's, uh, what are you doing, Luke? Packing. Packing? Packing many goodies for many customers. Hmm, packaging. Well, well, yes, package has, package has have to go out, unfortunately. Right, and uh, we've got the L200 out there, which is uh, pretty much totally finished, which is, uh, is, is well overdue. The customer will be excited to see that. It's taken a bit longer than expected. Jakey boy's giving it a nice clean out, aren't you, Jake? Good lad. Mm -hmm. So, update soon. Right, thank you. Right, so dyno results are in. This is the first test. Um, we can see that the maximum boost pressure was about 1.3 bar. Um, that's this spiky line. Um, we can see that the torque equaled lowest was 249, highest was 273. Um, wheel power varied from 138 to 147. Um, engine power 220-251. Now, engine power, like I say, is a is a calculation based on rundown. So the dyno takes into consideration when you let off the accelerator the drag caused by everything. So the tires, the axles, if any brake calipers are slightly gripping or prop shafts, um, any of the mechanical components from from here forwards, um, including including the engine as well, if that's having any kind of braking effect. Um, there is another way you can do it, you can pop it into neutral, um, but by popping it into neutral, you're not really taking into consideration the, the power losses of the transmission. So I prefer to run it down in the gear it's run up in. It does give a slightly higher engine figure, but um, like I said, the wheel figure is, is important. And, the numbers aren't important, it's more a comparison, a comparison situation that we're doing it for. We need to see whether the, the, the new part makes a gain, makes a loss or whatever, and then that's it. The dyno is a measuring tool. Um, a lot of people have uh, opinions on dynos and say, oh, you know, yeah, he raced it on the dyno and would it go around the track and all these kind of comments. And it's like, no, 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 you missed the point. A dyno is a measuring tool. It's like a tape measure or, uh, you know, a pair of vernier calipers. It's like saying, yeah, I'm a really good fabricator. I, um, I don't use any measuring equipment at all because, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with my hands, know how it all works, guess the lengths, it turns out all right. No. You need the measuring tools to be able to do the job right. The same as you need the measuring tools if you want to do the engines right. If you want to set these things up right, you need to know where you're going with it. But um, anyway, that's my... How are you getting on, Jake? Jake? Hello? Hello. Are you alive? It's fucking pipe shit, mate. It just... That's... Just designed it like this. Um, yeah, well, I can't do anything but agree. That new turbo looks good though, but look at the old one. The old one was quite broken. I think it was making good power for how badly broken the old turbo was. Oh no!
that's when a turbo is like actually broken when something's gone inside it not when like someone buys a turbo off you and doesn't run any oil through it and says you send them a bad one that's actually broken so the hybrid is going to be an upgrade and not broken <laughs> let's hope it has more power <laughs> so the, ch the difference is the changes this is the stock one, the one that we've just discussed that's a bit broken inside that we've taken off the Discovery. And this is not the one on the car, but one of many. Um, and this basically shows the differences between the two. Um, stock inlet, new one, um, ported, which is really nice. Um, and then we also have some porting to the wastegate area which you can see if you look carefully inside so that the wastegate becomes a little more efficient and then on the turbine side we have uh, some slight uh, modifications to that which you should be able to see here that's s slightly altered I'm not going to go into all the details and tell you all the secrets um, and then the compressor side, the cold side, uh, we can see that we've got quite a big difference in the compressor design. Uh, and this is a lot, lot better. It's more efficient and um, flows more air. So we can actually get nearly, well, on some applications, the spool of this beats that. Uh, and actually makes more power for a longer range, which is fantastic. So, so yeah, this is a hybrid, uh, and these are popular because they're brilliant. And there you go. So that is, if you buy a hybrid from us on the website, that's what you're going to get. Oh, the phone's ringing. Right, hybrid turbo is fitted, and... That wasn't the nicest, funnest job in the world. As you can see, the engine bay is tightly packed. And to say that it leaks a lot is an understatement. So, yeah, not the most pleasant under there. Right, but it's done, and it's time for uh, another dyno. So let's see what it makes. So the results are in. Now this is without going any higher on the high end fuel. The customer was complaining of uh, a lot of black smoke on the road at the top end, which a lot of road cars that we build are, you know, smoke free or as close to it. Don't get me a lot, a lot wrong. A lot of the stuff that we do build, a lot of the the fun time stuff rolls cold. You know, the tractor pulling, truck racing type scene, but not all of it has to. Anyway, this thing at the top end is actually pretty clean now, which is what he wanted, so that's good. So let's have a look. So what we've got before and after, which I'm quite pleased with the results. So we've got the engine power has gone from 232 at 5,000 to 276, which is a fairly big gain at 4,600, so we're making a lot more power at lower RPM. Onto the torque, 256 pounds foot previously to 310. Interesting that the torque's raised because we've now got a longer torque spectrum, um, which is very interesting. Uh, wheel power, which we can see here, hasn't really gone a great deal. You can only see sort of 19 horsepower at the wheels. So there are the results, and this is going from stock to hybrid um, you can see the hybrid makes a little more boost um, which is also totally within its efficiency range because they are built to do a little bit more boost so overall I'm pleased the setup really 
could do with maybe a, a, a slightly better induction system and a, and a, and a freer flowing exhaust. And if the guy wanted to really get some more potential power out of it, like I said, I've leaned it off so the fuel in is quite shallow at the top, uh, to, so it's nice and clean on the road. If he wanted to just go up a bit more, start making a bit more smoke, putting a bit more fuel on the top end, you're going to see some more horsepower that way, but we wanted to give a power gain and clean it up a bit. So overall, a good day. I got dirty. Um, working on Land Rover, which is, is yeah, mm, take that how you like it. I'm sure there are guys out there that love doing that. You, yeah, if you want a job, give me a call. <laughs> and, uh, so there you go. Oh, and we got to race a cow in the dyno, um, whatever that is. <laughs>